सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट करिकुलम बेस्ड सीरीज ध्वनिशाला सो फ्रेंड्स लेट्स ज्वाइन इन ध्वनिशाला क्लास एट वॉम ग्रीटिंग स्टूडियो चिल्ड्रन आम कविता सक्सेना अ जोग्राफी टीचर प्रेजेंटिंग क्लास एट जोग्राफी चैप्टर फोर एग्रीकल्चर आई होप यू विल लव लिस्निंग टू दिस चैप्टर so let me start the chapter with a small study of a fact that there were three friends gurpreet madho and tina who were walking through the village where they saw a farmer tilling land the farmer told them that he was growing wheat and had just added manure to the soil to make it more fertile he told the children that the wheat would fetch a good price in the mandi now children you know what is a mandi it's a wholesale market it can be a fruit mandi a vegetable mandi a grain mandi and mandi is a geographical word so he told the children that the wheat he is growing would fetch a good price in the mandi where it will be taken to the factories to make bread and then biscuits from the flour so after listening to this you can make out this this chapter is all about growing different type of crops and how they are grown this transformation from a plant to a finished product involves three type of economic activities these are primary secondary and tertiary activities primary activities now primary means the first one so these are the activities which include all those connected with extraction and production of natural resources agriculture fishing mining gathering are the examples of such activities secondary activities are concerned with the processing of these resources manufacturing of steel yes the bread you get in your home and the weaving of cloth so they are the examples of secondary activities the last type that's the tertiary activity these activities provide support to the primary and secondary sectors through services transport trade banking insurance and advertising are examples of tertiary activities here in this chapter we will be talking about agriculture so we are dealing with primary activities okay so if you have to introduce what is agriculture what will you say children yes agriculture is growing of fruits crops vegetables flowers and rearing of livestock and if i would have to add something it's the word agriculture which is obtained from the latin words agar or agri meaning soil and culture meaning cultivation so it doesn't include only the crops but also includes the fruits vegetables flowers you get in your homes as well as the rearing of livestock in the world 50% of persons are engaged in agricultural activity two thirds of india's population is still dependent on agriculture now there are some conditions favorable for agriculture what are these of course favorable topography topography as you know the shape of the land so the land should be plain and fertile favorable topography fertile soil climate they are vital for agricultural activity the land on which the crops are grown is known as arable land so the land where the crops can grow it is known as arable land and
and a figure is given in your textbook if you see figure 4.1 it shows the agricultural areas in the world so these are the areas where suitable factors for the growing of crops exist do you know agriculture has many sisters oh of course i think you are listening it for the first time agriculture has sisters yes there are sisters branches of agriculture and what are they so as we have learned that agriculture is the science and art of cultivation on the soil raising crops and rearing livestock it is also called farming so other sister branches are sericulture commercial rearing of silk worms it may supplement the income of a farmer so if a farmer is growing crops he can have some mulberry trees where silk worms can be reared so he is engaged in sericulture now we have pisciculture that's breeding of fish in specially constructed tanks and ponds so if a farmer has big field he can have you know some fish which he can breed in the tank or the pond then the other sister is the viticulture that's cultivation of grapes all the grape cultivation takes place in a particular climate but it's a part of agriculture and the last but not the least it's horticulture growing vegetables flowers and fruits for commercial use yes that's known as horticulture now we'll come on to a topic farm system agricultural farming can be looked as a system the important inputs are seeds fertilizers machinery and labor some of the operations involved are plowing sowing irrigation weeding and harvesting so these are the inputs which a farmer has to give into the field whereas the outputs from the system include what we get from the land it is the crop the wool dairy and poultry products so a farm system refers to the inputs as well as the output we get from them physical inputs include you know the sunshine temperature rainfall soil slope which are looked at everywhere in the world whereas the human inputs are labor machinery chemicals being manufactured by the humans and the storage facilities provided by the humans children there are many types of farming being followed worldwide but here we are going to talk about two main type of farming systems these are dependent upon geographical conditions demand of produce labor and the level of technology so based on these factors farming can be classified into subsistence and commercial subsistence as the word suggest once owned living subsistence means once owned living so this type of farming is practiced to meet the needs of the farmer's family traditionally low levels of technology without any machinery or electronic gadgets they are used household labor is there because the farmer doesn't have enough money to procure labor from outside so he has to depend upon simple tools family labor and the rainfall so that he can get a good crop subsistence farming can further be classified as intensive subsistence and primitive subsistence as the world suggest intensive subsistence okay so what i have told you about subsistence what is the meaning of subsistence yes for one's own living 
when i add the word intensive in front of subsistence that means that land is intensively cropped up intensively used for growing crops so in intensive subsistence agriculture the farmer cultivates a small plot of land using simple tools it can be a dao a stick or a iron rod and more labor from his nearby areas climate with large number of days with sunshine and fertile soils permit growing of more than one crop annually on the same plot rice is the main crop other crops can include wheat maize pulses and oil seeds these are the crops which you have been do- using in your day to day life intensive subsistence agriculture is prevalent in the thickly populated areas of the monsoon regions of south southeast and east asia these are the areas which receive heavy rainfall so all these crops can be grown vastly over here now one word here i want to tell you which is organic farming now this is the word for the future organic farming in this type of farming organic manure and natural pesticides are used instead of chemicals no genetic modification is done to increase the yield of the crop so the key term now is organic farming primitive subsistence agriculture as i have told you is classified into two types shifting cultivation and nomadic herding as the word suggests shifting cultivation the farmer is shifting from one place to another this type of cultivation is practiced in the thickly forested areas of amazon basin tropical africa parts of southeast asia and northeast india these are the areas of heavy rainfall and quick regeneration of vegetation in this farming a plot of land is cleared by felling the trees and burning them the ash produced is mixed with the soil and crops like maize yam potatoes and cassava are grown after the soil loses its fertility the land is abundant and the cultivator moves to a new plot shifting cultivation is also known as slash and burn agriculture okay slash and burn where the farmer is cutting the trees and burning the vegetation do you know shifting cultivation is known by different names in different parts of the world it is known as jhuming in northeastern india milpa in mexico roca in brazil and ladang in malaysia this type of agriculture is found in certain pockets of the world so it's still existing the second classification under primitive subsistence as i have told you is nomadic herding which is practiced in the semi arid and arid regions of sahara the largest desert of the world central asia and some parts of india like rajasthan and jammu kashmir in this type of farming the herdsman or the nomads move from place to place with their animals for fodder and water along defined routes you must have heard the names of some nomadic groups moving like bhutias gujars bakarwals so these are the people who are traveling along with their cattle this type of movement arises in response to climatic constraint and terrain sheep camel yak and goats are most commonly reared they provide milk meat wool hides and other products to the herders and their families Nomadic herding is still practiced in many parts of the world. In contrast to subsistence agriculture, we have 
commercial agriculture or commercial farming. In commercial farming, crops are grown and animals are reared for sale in market. The area cultivated and the amount of capital used is large. Most of the work is done by machines. Commercial farming includes commercial grain farming, mixed farming and plantation agriculture. So, let me explain each type of agriculture one by one. I'll pick up commercial grain farming. Now, what is commercial grain farming? In this type of farming, crops are grown for commercial purpose. Wheat and maize are common commercially grown grains. Maize in India is a crop which has been long been grown, but probably I, you people not have realized that the maize is same as corn which you eat which you really like in terms of uh, boiled corns or cornflakes. So wheat and maize are the important crops grown in India as well as America. Major areas where commercial grain farming is practiced are temperate grasslands of North America, which are known by the name of prairies, Europe. Here the grasslands are known as steppes and Asia. These areas are sparsely populated with large farms spreading over hundreds of hectares. Severe winters restrict the growing season and only a single crop can be grown. In mixed farming, the land is used for growing food and fodder crops and rearing livestock. It is practiced in Europe, Eastern USA, Argentina, Southeast Australia, New Zealand and South Africa. The third classification of commercial farming, plantations. Yes, plantation is a type of commercial farming where a single crop is grown. It can be tea, coffee, sugarcane, cashew nuts, rubber, banana or cotton. Large amount of labor and capital are required. The produce may be processed on the farm itself or in nearby factories. The development of a transport network is essential for such farming. Major plantations are found in the tropical regions of the world, like rubber in Malaysia, coffee in Brazil, tea in India and Sri Lanka, and cocoa plantations in Nigeria. Now let us talk about the major crops which are grown in the world. You must be eating a lot of crops. A lot of crops in the form of cereals, vegetables, pulses, okay, millets. So let us know about the major crops. A large variety of crops are grown to meet the requirement of the growing population. Crops also supply raw materials for agro-based industries. Otherwise, where will you get the sugar, your apple jam from? Major food crops are wheat, rice, maize and millets. Jute and cotton are fiber crops, whereas important beverage crops are tea and coffee. Rice Rice is the major food crop of the world. It is the staple diet of the tropical and subtropical regions. If I would tell you, more than half of the Indians eat rice. Rice needs high temperature, high humidity and rainfall. It grows best in alluvial clay soil, which can retain water. China leads in the production of rice, followed by India, Japan, Sri Lanka and Egypt. In favorable climatic conditions, as in West Bengal and Bangladesh, two to three crops of rice are grown in a year. The second most important crop grown is the wheat. Wheat requires moderate temperature and rainfall during growing season and bright sunshine at the time of harvest. We celebrate Besaki which is the harvest time of this crop.
in India. It thrives best in well-drained loamy soil and wheat is grown extensively in US, Canada, Argentina, Russia, Ukraine, Australia and India. And in Northern India, it is the staple diet of the people. It's also grown in winters in Northern India. Millets Millets are also known as coarse grains. Okay, coarse grains. They are not very soft. And now when you have heard this word multigrain, so what is multigrain? You are adding these millets, ragi, jowar, bajra with the wheat flour and getting that multigrain flour. So these are coarse grains. They can be grown on less fertile sandy soils, in high temperature, low rainfall. That is the reason why they are known as coarse grains. Moderate temperature and adequate rainfall. Jubar, Bajra, Ragi are grown in India where Rajasthan is the largest producer of bajra. The main diet of the people is bajra ki roti. Ragi is an important crop grown in Karnataka and Maharashtra is famous for jowar. Other countries are Nigeria, China and Niger. Now we come on to the most important crop of the world, maize. Maize requires moderate temperature, rainfall and lots of sunshine. It needs well-drained fertile soils. Maize is grown in North America, Brazil, China, Russia, Canada, India and Mexico. Maize is also known as corn. Various colorful varieties of corn are found across the world. You have seen as little as baby corn. Now we come on to the two main important fiber crops. If I ask you which is the material from you get your school uniform made, your answer would be yes. If it's a summer season, definitely it's cotton because cotton is one of the best cloth to be worn in the summer season. So, we are going to talk about cotton now. Cotton requires high temperature, light rainfall, 210, okay, 210, frost-free days and bright sunshine for its growth. It grows best on black and alluvial soils. China, US, India, Pakistan, Brazil and Egypt are the leading producers of cotton. It is one of the main raw materials for the cotton textile industry. Another important fiber crop that is grown in the tropical region is the jute. Jute is also known as golden fiber. It grows well on alluvial soil and requires high temperature, heavy rainfall and humid climate. This crop is grown in the tropical areas. India and Bangladesh are the leading producers of jute. Here I want to tell you something about uh, jute production in India. After partition, most of the productive jute area, fertile jute producing area went to Bangladesh and India was only left with the mills. So India has to recover its jute industry back. Therefore, we found new areas where jute can be grown. Apart from West Bengal, jute is now grown in Odisha, Meghalaya, parts of Assam and even Andhra Pradesh. We will take up two more crops in the next session. So let us revise what we have done till now. You have come to know about the three important economic activities being practiced in any country. These are primary, secondary and tertiary. Agriculture. What is agriculture? It's an important part of primary activity. We have done the definition, how the word evolved and various sister branches of agriculture. 
then we have done what is a farm system input and output of farm system types of farming the two main types of farming which are persistent in the world are subsistence and commercial in subsistence farming we did intensive farming and primitive subsistence farming in detail under commercial agriculture we did commercial grain farming mixed farming plantation agriculture and we discussed the areas where these agricultural practices takes place then we discussed about the important food crops as well as fiber crops grown in the world which are rice wheat maize millets cotton jute i hope you have understood these topics well do read the textbook for an easy understanding of these topics you can also make a map work either using a world map or a map of india and mark all these crops as per their location so children the remaining part of the chapter i'll take in the next session till then revise well happy learning thank you friends you were just listening to the series dhwani shala production assistant amit kumar this series dhwani shala was recorded by bati langlingdo and vikas sangwan produced by vandana arimardan and this program is brought to you by cietncert new delhi india